Hello, and thanks for joining us on Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We're reaching you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. My name is Ronke Kolawoli. There has been further confirmation that President Muhammadu Buhari is recovering fast and will soon return to work immediately his doctor gives the go-ahead. This is coming from the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress APC, Chief John Odigyo Yugun, who was part of the first delegation that visited the president in London. He spoke to newsmen at the party's national secretariat in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. Chairman led leaders of the party and some governors on the first visit, and since their return to the country and similar visit paid by another set of governors, including those from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Chief Oyegun says there has been sufficient information on Mr. President's health to the public. I want to confirm that yes, Mr. President is convalescing very, very strongly right now. All he's doing is having as much rest as he can to build up his energy, to build up his stamina. And uh, that is it, but the worst is certainly over. He advised those spreading hate speeches on President Buhari's health to exercise caution, stressing that the president will be back stronger to deliver efficient and effective leadership to Nigerians who overwhelmingly brought him to office. In another development, the 10 member APC Constitution Review Committee has submitted its report to the national chairman. It has become quite clear that there are aspects of it that were either not practical or needed to be rethought. Most of the amendments we are suggesting here, put into place, we give, we strengthen our party. Some of the aspirants in the forthcoming Anambra gubernatorial election were also at the party secretariat to return their nomination forms. Everybody with the right mental attitude must know that only one person will win it. So it's not a do or die affair. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Meanwhile, some members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Yobe State, have defected to the governing All Progressives Congress APC. Governor Ibrahim Gaydam joined the leadership of the APC in the state in receiving them. Mustafa Yusuf Musa has the details of that report. It is indeed a gathering of solidarity, loyalty, and commitment of purpose in the course of the All Progressive Congress in Yobe State as high profile politicians from the People's Democratic Party joined the ruling party. Receiving the new entrant into the APC, Governor Ibrahim Gaidam, and the APC National Secretary, Alajme Malabuni, told them to feel at home as the APC in Yobe State will provide them with level playing field to contribute their quotas in the development of the state. The large turnout of our supporters here today is a clear indication that our party is working stronger and stronger day by day in our state and Nigeria is a form. The event also featured speakers after speakers adding their voice to what they described as historic coming at a time of consolidating on the achievement of the Gaydam led administration. They all agreed that discipline Loyalty and unity is what hold the APC in Yobe State and therefore advise the new entrant to key into the existing political structure on ground. In their remarks, the former Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Alhaji Jubal Megari, former member, Board of Trustees, acted Shetima Mohamed Saleh, and former Minority Leader, Yobe State House of Assembly, Abdullah Adamubazwa, said they were attracted to join the APC due to the good leadership qualities of Governor Ibrahim Gaydam. All speakers and political stakeholders concurred that the DCMPs are tested politicians who have made individual and collective marks in their political sojourn from what local, state, and national levels, and they are coming with add value to the APC in Yobe State. In Dematru, I am Mustafa Yusuf Musa, NTA News. Away from political matters now in providing strategic level training for senior officers of the nation's armed forces. The provision of adequate infrastructural facility is an important contributing factor. This is the view of the Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Olonishaki, at the inauguration of some projects executed by the National Defense College, NDC, in Abuja. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports. 
The project inaugurated comprised participants' quarters too at the college permanent site, Piwoi, along Airport Road, and the civilian staff quarters, Guarimpa. Work started on the participants' quarters too in 2009, while that of the 12th number two bedroom flats for staff commenced in 2016 to cater for the accommodation challenge of the college. Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Olonishaki said it is heartwarming to note that the college has shown great commitment through the projects in actualizing its desire to relocate to the permanent site. The college has attained a very high reputation in the 25 years of its existence, given the recognition it has earned among similar strategic training institutions worldwide. The quality of senior officers who have had the privilege of passing through the National Defense College is a clear testimony of the high standard for which the college is globally acknowledged. We will continue to ask for more to enable the college to complete the remaining structures in this permanent site. Most urgent is the need for funds to quickly complete the furnishing of this PQ2 in line with 2017 budget estimates. We pray that this will happen soon so that the edifice will be put to use as quickly as possible. The inauguration ceremony is part of activities to mark the Silver Jubilee celebration of the National Defense College. In Abuja, Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. Straight to the National Assembly, where the Senate has clarified the ambiguity emanating from the Nigerian Peace Corps bill passed and adopted by the National Assembly. Reacting to the controversy, Senate spokesman Aliyu Sabi Abdullahi said the bill passed into law by the National Assembly was to give back into the existing Peace Corps of Nigeria under Dixon Ako. See which we considered its bill, was the bill that said the Peace Corps of Nigeria. And of course, dissolution within the context of that bill affects only the Peace Corps of Nigeria, which we know before now to be under the leadership of Dr. Dixon Aku. And they are the ones that have been absorbed into the law and for which the transition arrangement will be affecting them effectively. So there is no ambiguity here. It's a procedural thing. We are only trying to see if we can help the other group by getting them to be incorporated here. And it doesn't amount to replacing the National Peace Corps of Nigeria. Since the Senate adopted the report of its committee on Tuesday, two different groups have laid claims to the bill passed. Meanwhile, a bill to repeal the National Commission for Refugees Act 2004 for reenactment as the National Commission for IDPs, Refugees and Migrants has been subjected to public hearing by the House of Representatives. National Assembly correspondent Rabi Musa reports. The bill sponsored by Mohamed Sani Zoro is to address issues arising from intermittent conflicts resulting in loss of lives, displaced persons, and more than 200,000 Nigerians as refugees in neighboring countries. Speaker House of Representatives, represented by House Leader Femi Gbaja B. Amila, declared a one-day public hearing on the need for one commission for internally displaced persons, refugees, and migrants. The area went from multiple agencies and government working at cross purposes without co coordination should be over. Chairman House Committee on IDPs, Refugees and Federal Government Initiative on the Northeast region, Mohamed Saini Zuru, said, The law we seek to repeal and replace is intended to be a law that will capture the persons of concern. Contributions were made by non-governmental agencies, United Nations agencies, International Red Cross, federal government agencies and members of the public. We are happy that the migration and the internally displaced persons issues are being added to the mandate of the National Commission on Refugee. The bill is a welcome development. It is really curious for us um, actors on ground in trying to know which the relevant agency is in terms of coordination. Emergency that has to do with 
migrants with this commission. The committee is expected to report back to plenary for further legislative inputs. Rabbi Musa, NTA News. And the Senate Committee on Primary Health Care and Communicable Diseases is advocating more collaboration with development partners to manufacture vaccines locally for improvement of primary health care services. This was when the Senate Committee interfaced with some relevant international groups championing health care services in the country. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nani reports. Adequate health care has been a challenge for developing countries of the world, including Nigeria. In this regard, the National Assembly is complementing efforts of the federal government through the Senate Committee on Primary Health Care and Communicable Diseases by initiating collaboration with development partners to improve health care delivery across the country. Access to technical support, training of personnel, and resource management to develop locally manufactured vaccines against the spread of epidemics are possible areas of partnership. To begin to work together, to plan together, and to look at how these our agencies can support the agenda of federal government of Nigeria to better provide uh, health for the citizens of this country, particularly our vulnerable groups, people who live in rural areas, people, the poor people, you know, and things like that. We want a coordinated approach to our healthcare development uh, program, which had not been there before, especially as regards to primary health care. If you're uh, employing funds, which agency? will be able to monitor it and oversight those and ensure that those funds are properly utilized for the purpose meant for. This is the first time the Senate Committee is meeting with this group comprising the United Nations agencies, the World Bank, the World Health Organization, and other bilateral agencies. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. And now to other stories. Considering the emerging roles of space technology in a fast developing economy like Nigeria, the retired Brigadier General Ango Anwar Lecture for 2017 took a critical look at challenges and prospects of space technology in national development. Science correspondent Kiri Anumayo reports that the core issue is how best to deploy the nation's satellite for effective utilization in many sectors. Lecture delivered by Olufemi Abola on behalf of Senator Ajayi Borofis, the desirable expectations and favorable impacts of emerging space technologies and their spin-offs for the benefits of Nigeria's economic market and her industrial sector were identified. Of remarkable importance is the development of aerospace industry for use in spacecraft, space flight, rocketry, space stations, satellites, space exploration, and planetary missions. President, Nigerian Society of Engineers, Otis Anyeji, eulogized Major General Ago, who has been honored through the lecture. Engineer General Ago, during his service and training in the Signal Corps of the Nigerian Army, discovered that the military power in the future lies in the power of space. General applied himself to all the rudiments of space science and technology, including all the international treaties applicable to space. Speakers on the occasion were unanimous on the need to expand space technology to include establishment of supporting infrastructure for launch capability. And when we talk of the way Nigeria is in terms of space program, we are making progress inch by inch. But we can leap higher than where we are now because of uh, if we have the available infrastructure. Nigeria is covered in terms of both civil and military space. What will sustain the activities of the civil and military space organizations is funding. The cardinal objective of the Space Engineering Division of the Nigerian Society of Engineers is to ensure the professional development of engineers in the space sector. Kirian Umayo, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says the federal government will not be intimidated to rescind his decision to amend the National Broadcasting Code. The minister stated this when he granted audience to Nigeria's delegation to the African Union's Economic, Social, Cultural Council in Abuja. Anthony Fosin 
Here's that report. Social and Cultural Council of the African Union is one of the organs of the union whose membership is drawn from the civil society and part of its mandate is to promote African cultural heritage. It is on this account that the Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed said one of the cardinal policies of the present administration is to diversify the economy and grow the creative industry. The whole idea is to protect local creative talent and make sure that it grows, create employment for our people. If we are not going to export jobs to other countries and expect our economy to grow, yes, there are no studios in Nigeria because nobody is going to invest in Nigeria. If the law allows you to go and do the same thing outside Nigeria. To members of the AU's ECOSOC, the minister enjoined them to see themselves as Nigeria's ambassadors to the council and therefore must promote Nigeria's image. I appreciate the single-mindedness of this administration to rescue the country from the abyss where we found ourselves. This government is committed to its avowed objectives of, re of revamping the economy, making Nigerians, Nigeria safe for all Nigerians, and putting Nigeria on the path of probity. The minister expressed satisfaction with the fact that so far they have done Nigeria proud by bidding and getting the hosting right for the African Festival of Arts and Culture bill for November this year. Earlier, members of the delegation in their separate submissions informed the minister of the benefits Nigeria stands to gain in hosting the continental event. Honorable Minister, I want to team up with the office because we need to popularize this, we need to sensitize people, we need to market it and take it down to the grassroots. With this event, we are going to build African Festival City, where there will be African Institute for Culture, for Art and Culture. The members, however, appealed to the minister to press for more benefits from AU by the federal government as the biggest contributor to the union. In Abuja, Antony Forsen, NTA News. Let me inform you that you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Let's join Jennifer in Lagos for an update on the flood situation in the center of excellence and the efforts of the government. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Ronke. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. The recent torrential rain experienced across the country has no doubt left a great impact on the lives of some Lagos residents. Rotimi Oluagbemi, who visited some communities within the metropolis to feel their pulse on how they are coping with the flood situation, compiled this report. This is Ososa and Ojileru streets, both in Oroshoki community of Lagos State. The residents here are complaining seriously about the untold hardship that they are subjected to whenever there's heavy rainfall. Some of them appealed to government to clear the Ososa Canal, which has been overtaken by wits and allegedly responsible for the flooding of the area. Concerning those people that are in their room, the water is entering their room. They are using as in a parka and bucket to park it outside. So we want government to help us. The worst of it is this, uh, that canal you see over there. It used to come out seasonally, and you can see how dirty the water is. Many people, they are complaining about this area too much. The uh, drainage water is due. Everything flushed to our canal there. One of the leaders of the community has a different view about the situation. No landlord has any problem. The water behind us is, has been very friendly. We are all living in peace in this area. We have no problem. The situation was not different at Bosun and Ifowoshe Street in Ogudu Ojota. The only major canal here has been overtaken by garbage. Uh, the only problem that we have in this area is just only the drainage. But we are appealing to our government, Lagos State government, to come and help us clear the canal from Conf um, uh, Togate to uh, Alakwe side. It was the people's opinion 
that the Lagos State Government should assist them in clearing the canals for smooth flow of storm water to avoid destruction of lives and properties as a result of flooding. Still on environment, Lagos State Government has reaffirmed its commitment to sustaining the environment in order to improve safety standard in the metropolis. Governor Akin Wumi Ambode disclosed this at a one-day workshop on UN Habitat Urban Thinkers Campus, a program held in Lagos. Nosal Sula reports. Was represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Tunji Belo, said improving the lives of urban and slum dwellers within Lagos State is one of the strategic focus of the government and the convening of Urban Thinkers Campus program was a welcome development. The idea is to make it possible for people to live, work and recreate within their communities without feeling left behind as a result of unequal distribution of social amenities. According to stakeholders, the primary objective of the workshop was to bring key urban stakeholders together to exchange views on the effective implementation of the new urban agenda. The only state in Africa that is functioning today is Lagos. What I did was that I invited the United Nations to come and see what we are doing in Lagos so that they can come and help us. It was becoming very, very difficult for a lot of people to come up to the home ownership ladder. So we now had to reduce the entry points. We're all trying to think about what are those policies that need to be put in place for us to be able to achieve the mega city and the smart city. The state government also called for urgent need to start building cities resilient to disasters so that people could live well and hand over a befitting environment to the future generation where all sectors and political system would be functioning. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. Now those are the stories from Lagos and this are back to Ronke in Abuja for more on NTA Nationwide News. Thank you, Jennifer. Human trafficking tarnishes a country's image, threatens national security, and weakens our economic fundamental. This was the position of speakers at a public lecture organized by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, ahead of the World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Gabriel Odu has that report. Towards a human trafficking-free nation is the thrust of this year's National Anti-Trafficking Week. NAPTIP is calling for a much more strategic approach that addresses poverty and social exclusion by government at all levels. Wider social policies such as free education must be part of our anti-trafficking response. Wife of the President, represented by Grace Sharma, Coordinator Education and Empowerment, Future Assured, said Nigeria must get rid of this modern-day slavery called human trafficking. Through my Future Assured program, I have committed to the pursuit of women and youth empowerment, their education and health. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice and other speakers shared a common position towards combating human trafficking. It is a matter of equally grave concern to us as a government to observe that pursuant to the 2017 Trafficking in Persons Report, the United States downgraded Nigeria to tier two watch list which creates the undue impression that our country is not doing enough to combat the scourge. We are determined to address this regrettable classification and ensure that NAVTIF is restored to its pride of place as a model anti-human trafficking institution in Africa and globally. Meanwhile, United Kingdom has promised five million pounds to assist Nigeria fight human trafficking. In Abuja, Gabriel Udu, NTA News. Nigerian women have been advised to overcome their fears and continue to play positive roles in nation building. This was at the launch of the book and unveiling of the foundation Women Dare to Dream, written by Reverend Tina Bauer. Serafina Okon reports.
What is the reason behind this book, Woman Dare to Dream? And what message really are you projecting to every woman else? I saw that dreams can keep you going. Dream is your motivation. The 143-page book, written in poetic style, underscores the need for women to shun fears and rise above the challenges of life with a positive disposition. The book reviewer captures the content more soothingly. So this is a call to action. It's a reminder that we should do something. We should dare. We should take a step. We should do something. Not just dream, but activate the dreams. Crave for them to play, you know, a very important role in the scheme of things is being sort of advocated by now. Guests at the book presentation say the book will help women define their purpose in life. Women dare to dream is a must read to all, particularly professional women, to strike a balance between home and office. Dedicating it to me, but I am also rededicating it to all Nigerian women and womanhood. Meanwhile, the foundation Women Dare to Dream is dedicated to relevant stakeholders to create and sustain the right social, economic and political environment necessary to help women discover and live their life's dreams. Serafina Okon, NT News. Some pensioners make case for the payment of their graduates as we join Fatai in Ibado for this and more reports. Hello Fatai. Good afternoon. Thank you, Ronke, and it's a warm welcome to the genesis of television, Ibadan. Interagency collaboration has been suggested as fundamental to achieving sustainable peace and development in Nigeria. This was the consensus of speakers at a three-day conference of the Society for Peace Studies and Security held in Elysian, Ogun State. Joel Fokwala reports. The panacea that will guarantee safe business environment is the focus of the 11th International Conference and Annual General Assembly of the Society for Peace Studies and Practice. In his keynote address, a security expert, Dr. Enna Ehumu, described interagency collaboration as vital in combating militancy, insurgency, and other forms of crime. If we collaborate, we create synergy. We create a new energy that uh, will enable us to solve the problem. Uh, they will reduce duplication of efforts. Former President and Chairman Board of Trustees, Society for Peace, Studies and Practice, Professor Isaac Olawale Albert, helped on proper coordination of security agencies for better efficiency. Professor Tajuddin Akonji, in his paper, prescribed joint capacity building and amendment of enabling laws to address overlapping functions of security agencies to foster sharing of intelligence reports. They are not exchanging information, they are not exchanging intelligence, and uh, this has implications for their success in um, ensuring security. President of the Society for Peace Studies and Practice, Dr. Nathaniel Dangibo, and other stakeholders say the three-day conference is aimed at changing the narrative of the country in security coordination. From Elisha Remo, Joel Bukbola, NT News. Meanwhile, agitation by pensioners in Oshun State for payment of their benefits has continued. A faction of pensioners in that state under the ages of 2011-2012 Forum of Retirees at a press conference in Oshogo alleged that the state government is planning to divert the recent tranche of Paris Club refund. Adeni Itaiwo reports. For members of the Omoni Ile Somi led 2011-2012 Forum of Retirees in Oshun State, there is fear that the arrival of the second tranche of Paris Club refund in the state may not mark the end of their running battle with the state government over payment of their pension benefits. While noting that the second tranche of the Paris Club refund and accumulated internally generated revenue from both the local and state government are enough to offset a substantial part of their retirement benefits, the pensioners urge the state government to capture and prioritize payment of their emoluments. Oshun State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Lani Badeniwa, said the responsibility to dispose it lied with the Azan Sumono led apportionment committee. This is not going to be different. Government is surely going to make sure, I mean, to make that committee that has been functional and have been doing the right thing 
for the people of the state of Oshun to take that decision again. States, including Ogun and Kwara, at last week began the disbursement of the Paris Fund to meet urgent workers' need. True state got 6.314 billion naira. Inu Shobo, Adini Itaiwo, NT News. After the size of our contribution from Ibadan, it is back to Abuja for more stories on Nationwide. Thank you, Fatai. Governor Mohamed Abubakar of Bauchi State has sworn in our new secretary to the state government, Al Haji Mohamed Nadada Umar. The governor charged the new SSG to use his wealth of experience to enhance successful delivery of ongoing projects of government in the state. Adamo Haruna Adamo reports. Council and relief of the former secretary to the Bauti State Government of his appointments on the 20th of July 2017. Governor Mohammed Abubakar of Bauti State appointed Muhammad Nadada Umar as the new SSG on the same date. During the swearing in ceremony, Governor Mohammed Abubakar reiterated determination of his led government to bring in positive change to the people of Bauti State in all ramifications. Governor Mohammed Abubakar further stressed that the choice of Mohammed Nadada Umar as the new SSG is informed by the need to find a more competent person that will enable his government drive home her policies and programs. The new SSG, Nadada Umar, was born in December 1954 and had served in the same capacity between 1999 and 2006. The ceremony was attended by traditional rulers, party leaders, heads of security agencies, tough government functionaries, and many APC supporters. In Bauchi, Adam Haruna Adams, NTA News. Determined to increase the pace of rural development through effective governance, accountability, transparency, the Yobe State Government has held a three-day special retreat for newly elected local government officials. The orientation program in capacity building is also meant to ensure the government services reach the grassroots. Mohammed Musa Askira reports. Good governance and prudent management of public finances at the grassroots level for progress and development is one of the cardinal objectives of the Governor Ibrahim Gaidam's administration. It is in line with this that the Yobe State Government gathered experts in various critical sectors to build the capacity of the newly elected local government officials. The special retreat for council chairmen, vice chairmen, and councillors from the 17 local governments was basically to enhance their abilities to effectively deliver service and promote people-oriented governance. Governor Ibrahim Gaidam, who was represented by the head of service, al Haji Saleh Abubakar, urged participants to step up efforts in improving revenue generation and a skewed project that directly impact on the lives of their people. This is informed by the fact that the attention of our administration in recent years has been geared towards formulating and implementing aggressive a well thought out program of systematic reforms in order to reposition the various institutions and services being rendered by government. The Director of News and Current Affairs in Nigeria Television Authority, Al Haji Ali Baba Barao, had in a presentation described media as an indispensable tool in ensuring accountability, transparency, and good governance. The local government is a veritable platform. Where the system goes right, the media is supposed to educate and enlighten the public so that we have this symbiotic relationship between the public, the government, and the government. al Haji Ali Baba Barao had urged government at all levels to collaborate with the media to promote good governance by carrying people along. Various speakers at the special retreat identified the councils as government closest to the people, hence the need to involve them in the governance. They urged the newly elected local government officials to concentrate on the provision of basic social amenities and rural infrastructure for transformation of the area in Damatru, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTA News. This is nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We now pause for some messages. The news continues shortly. Change does not just happen. 
you and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office, and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being low abiding students. Many Nigerian children cannot afford to go to school because they live in poverty. Instead of enjoying education and its benefits, they get involved in street trading to help themselves and their families survive. The Rochester Foundation is a humanitarian organization which currently caters for over 15,000 less privileged children in various schools all over Nigeria. The foundation has a goal to take thousands of less privileged children off the streets and provide them with free quality education from secondary school to the university as part of her Vision 2030. Admission forms are free and available online and at all Rochester Foundation colleges at Oweri, Jos, Ibadan, Kano, Enugu, Sokoto, Yola, Bauchi, Zaria and Oboko. For further details, visit www.rochesfoundation.org. Rochester Foundation, we educate to empower. His Royal Highness, the Emir of Fika and Chairman, Yoba State Council of Chiefs, and Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, cordially invites the general public to the 314 million naira appeal fund for the restructuring, remodeling, and expansion of Potiskum Central Mosque. Date Saturday, July 29, 2017. Venue. Emir of Fika's Palace, Potiskum. Time, 10 a.m. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Yobe State, Al Haji Ibrahim Gaida. Guest of honor, Al Haji Muhammadu Umaru Jibrila Bindu. Barista Muhammadu Abdullahi Abubakar, Al Haji Kashim Shetima, Al Haji Ibrahim Hassan Dankwambo, Architect Darius Dixon Ishaku, Chief Host, Al Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, Emir of Fika, Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence, Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abubakar, the Third. Chief Lodger, Al Haji Aliko Dangote, Chairman of the Occasion, Malam Adamu Chiroma, Mada Kinfika, Guest Speakers, Sheikh Tijani Bala Kalarawikano, Sheikh Muhammad Kabiru Haruna Gombe, Announcer, Chairman, Organizing Committee, Al Haji Baba Baba, Demasani Fika. <laughs> Ultimate Hotels Abuja, the ultimate place to be.
Baby, ah, baby, please now. Eh? School days are not for marrying. Marrying on campus in a marriage that is not a marriage. Is she married? Which marriage? An ill-timed union that breeds domestic violence, use, distractions, and heartbreak. And if she graduates and leaves me here, I will take another wife. You're what my father would call a rolling stone. Shit out again. Do not show the responsibilities of married life before it is time. <laughs> Professor John Boone, Episode 2, Season 4, Campus Marriage. Wait in this now. Eh? Now you have to choose your destiny. Oh, yeah, bring two. Which one? That one like uh, your gaki leg and that one like uh, Udo's forehead. Over and out. Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow Unlimited. For over 25 years, I have been privileged to anchor various programs on television. But the news program that I find most exciting and challenging is The Weekend File. This is largely because of its philosophy of engaging all classes of people, the artisans, politicians, technocrats, captains of industry, and professional analysts on issues that touch all aspects of life and living. In the conversations that follow, you find complexities, different views, ideologies, thought patterns, and individual beliefs. It's quite engaging. We do this Saturdays on NTA Network Service at 9 p.m. It's Weekend Power, but you call it Weekend Companion, and it's all about nation building. Join me, Kirin Umayo, and production crew every Saturday for this weekend treat, and I can tell you that it is unmissable. Make it a day. Glad to know you're still watching nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Minister of Education visits University of Meduguri as a tax on the institution worry the federal government. Mohammed in our Meduguri Network Center brings us this and other reports. Hello. Mohammed. Thank you, Ronke. Welcome, viewers, to Meduguri. Minister of Education Malam Adamu Adamu says academic activities will continue unabated in the University of Meduguri despite incessant suicide bomb attacks on the institution to disrupt teaching and learning. The minister stated this when he visited the university to assess the security situation in the school. Abakar Mohammed Musa reports. Addressing the management of the University of Meduguri, the Education Minister Malam Adamu Adamu expressed concern over continuous attack on the institution by insurgents and assured that perimeter fence and heavy security presence will be provided in the school soon. He said since the main target of insurgents is to bring to a halt academic activities, the ministry is determined towards ensuring consistency in teaching and learning and reiterated the need to adopt more proactive measures in guaranteeing the security of lives and property within the university. The Ministry of Education is going to come to the aid of University of Maiduguri. We will do everything possible to keep these people out of our campus. The Vice Chancellor University of Maiduguri, Professor Ibrahim Abubakar Jodi, while informing the Minister of the nine staff of the university abducted by terrorists in northern Borno, says the security situation facing the school requires holistic intervention considering the series of threats. The Vice Chancellor later conducted the minister round the school. In Maiduguri, Abubakar Mohammed Musa, NT News. 420 internally displaced persons suffering from acute eye problems and other health challenges in Dalori, Bama, and Banki camps have successfully recovered following the free surgeries by the Nigerian Air Force in line with the directive of Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abokar, Chief of Medical Services Headquarters of the Nigerian Air Force Air Vice Marshal Saleh Shinkafi disclosed this at the completion of the medical outreach. Again, Abokar Mohamed Musa was there and now reports. The beneficiaries of the free general surgeries of the Nigerian Air Force were carefully selected based on the seriousness of their various health challenges. According to the Air Force, its services are not restricted to protection of lives and property of the citizenry, hence the health intervention. The whole program is a success story, and a number of them with, uh, who have been blind for many years with, uh, uh, has had, uh, they have had surgeries which now made them to regain their sight. All the 201 cases 
have fully recovered and are doing very well. Uh, the IDPs say they are appreciative to God and the Nigerian Air Force because before now they were almost incapacitated. But as you can see, the people have regained their health. This is the last batch of patients who underwent operation from Burma IDP camp as those in Banki and Daluri have earlier been conveyed to their respective places. From 105 Composite Group of the Nigerian Air Force in Meduguri, Abu Bakr Muhammad Musa, NT News. And that is all we can take from Meduguri. Moving on now, education remains the bedrock to the attainment of meaningful social economic development. The National Coordinator, Initiative for Leadership and Economic Watch in Nigeria, Ambassador Agopolo Splendor, stated this while speaking with newsmen in Abuja. Patricia Esemiluba has that report. That Nigeria has failed to take off a joining world power owing to persistent neglect of education and the attendant production of poor quality manpower that cannot meet up to the skill requirements to power the economy. The good news, however, is the current administration's effort to change the narratives using a strategy of war on corruption, which had hitherto been a drain pipe of scarce resources. The education sector as a whole represents the bedrock of the nations within the framework of international economic driven by knowledge, technology, and the attendant rapid changes it brings. He points out that the Buhari-led administration has so far done well in its effort to correct the ills of the system. In Abuja, Patricia A. Samiluba, NTA News. Showing positive attitude to children is one sure way to bring out the innate potential in them. Professor of Educational Psychology, Joseph Boko Badu, stated this at the 26th lecture series of the University of Abuja. Abdullahi Musa Suleja reports. That about 10 million children are out of school in Nigeria. While some are out or drop out for lack of money to pursue or proceed, others are slow learners desirous of good schools to improve their performance. Professor Joseph Bakobadu, who spent over four decades in the teaching profession starting from primary school, spoke on intellectualism, its anatomy, and midwifing. Professor Badu said the nation in the past recorded some positive actions in the education sector, but that presently the sector is at crossroad due to so many factors. He mentioned inadequate funding of education by government that gave rise to the private school enterprise. But again, he listed some factors such as poor maternal care and stimulation, presence of diet in the home, presence of crime in the home, and absence of harmony between the schools and the home that affect the child's academic achievement. It is my submission here today that children's intelligence can be boosted and enhanced through a well-planned and guided curriculum, and Nigeria shall be better for it. Vice Chancellor of the University of Abuja, Professor Michael Adiku, commanded the intellectualism of the dawn, a requisite that elevates him to the professorial calling. The university has recently held a number of such lectures. Abdullahi Musa Suleja, NTA News. Still on education, Old Girls Association of Federal Government Girls College, Bakuri in Kassina State, converged on Abuja with the desire of giving back not only to their alma mater, but to the society at large. Salihu Abdullahi was at the inaugural reunion and now reports. Indeed, it is a moment that brought back lost memories and friends. The long hug, exchange of pleasantry, the selfie characterized the mood of the elated old girls of the Federal Government Girls College, Bakuri, Funtua in Castina State. In a high morale, the group commenced a walk from the Unity Fountain and terminated at the headquarters of National Universities Commission. With placards, the old girls make their messages clear in determination to supporting ongoing efforts by the government to improve the quality of girl child education in Nigeria. And the theme is securing the environment for the girl child education. Uh, so the essence is to create awareness that out there, there are people who care. There are people who really want to say, look, the state of education is, is sorry. 
we need to do something about it. I left Bakori in 1982. I've not seen most of them in the past 30 years, and we're meeting again today. It's, it's something else. They believe now is the time to inject those values learned while at FGGC Bakuri into the society, having attained successes in their various endeavors. They said distance will never serve as a barrier, as we have among the Bakurians are those in the diaspora. So I work to build confidence in girls, in women, to make sure that they have the right mindset for success. I'm here to support my um, fellow Bakurians, um, financially, morally, spiritually, and otherwise. Concern about the state of affairs in Nigeria, especially the education sector, the old girls want government at all levels to take urgent steps towards improving girl child education. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Flood ravages parts of Auchi in Edo State. Let's join Agatha in Bini for this and more from that zone. Hello, Agatha. Okay, good evening and thank you for joining us in Benin. Normal sea has returned to Igbe Road in Auchi after a downpour that destroyed properties. Victor Ojon Acha reports that most of the victims of the flood disaster are shop owners on the commercial road. The downpour led to a heavy flood on Igbe Road, which swept away some properties, including vehicles. The regular flooding on the road has turned the area, which is the commercial nerve of Auchi, unaccessible as ditches and potholes have taken over the streets. The traders who have returned to their business say they lock their shops and close for the day anytime it's threatening to rain in order not to be washed away by flood. Whenever the sky is black now, everybody has to move away from Beirut because here it's just a disaster. My house says we call the park. The, park. the fact that the, the situation has become unbearable, especially for we businessmen. So, so some of us are even contemplating whether to back out of, out of River Road. Meanwhile, the residents of ICE Road want the government to address the problem of the gully, which has been created on the road by the flood. In Auchi, Victor Odion Acha, NTA News. Away from flooding in Auchi, Governor Gordon Obaseki says the only way out of the challenges facing the education sector, particularly at the basic level, is by reenacting the basic education system. He said this at the close of a one-day basic education stakeholders forum in Benin. Good luck in Naini. Reports. In February this year, stakeholders in basic education from across the country converge on Benin City at the instance of the state government to deliberate on how basic education can be repositioned to meet the modern day realities. One of the resolutions from that meeting was the inclusion of the various communities, parents, governments and private sectors as critical stakeholders, an action which informed this forum. Governor Paseki, who is passionate about the transformation of that aspect of education, said the forum became necessary in order to allow stakeholders contribute in making basic education regain its lost glory. Our children need a solid educational foundation to prosper. We need to provide them with the right skills by ensuring that quality basic education in Edo State is accessible to all. Resource person at the forum tutored participants on different topics on basic education reform, community and society participation. In Benin, I am good luck in Aini, NT News. And that's our package. Nationwide continues in Abuja. Good evening. Agatha in Benin, thanks. Obiageli Ugoke is standing by for news trending across the globe. You welcome to the foreign news segment. Japanese Defense Minister Tomami Inada has resigned over allegations relating to a controversial Japanese military deployment in South Sudan. Mrs. Inada denied claims that she helped cover up internal records exposing the danger that Japanese peacekeepers faced during the operation. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has apologized to the nation, saying he bore full responsibility for appointing her to the post. 
And Nawaz Sharif has resigned as Prime Minister of Pakistan following a decision by the country's Supreme Court to disqualify him from office. The ruling came after a probe into his family's wealth following the 2015 Panama Papers dump linking Mr. Sharif's children to offshore companies. Mr. Sharif has consistently denied any wrongdoing in the case. The verdict was handed down unanimously by a five-member bench in the courts. Following the verdict, Nawaz Sharif has resigned from his responsibilities as Prime Minister. Meanwhile, Russia has ordered the U.S. to call its diplomatic staff to 455 in retaliation for sanctions. The new U.S. embassy staffing level would be the same as Russia's embassy in Washington. The Russian foreign minister also said it will seize holiday properties and the warehouse used by U.S. diplomats. And at least 54 people have been injured after a train crashed at a station in the Spanish city of Barcelona. Officials say the incident happened Friday during the rush hour at France's station in the city center. Dozens of emergency personnel have been sent to the station with most of the injured being treated at the platform. And that concludes this package. The news continues. Next, a sports update with Ayodeji Makinde.